Well, hello everybody, this is uh, Chris with the Ancient Scholar. So today I'm going to be doing a literature review, and this is actually something that I really haven't done uh, before, and um, I think uh, from time to time I'd actually like to do that, just because uh, in a lot of the, the allied health, nursing, paramedic, uh, EMS, what have you, types of programs, they don't focus a whole lot on uh, literature. Now, Often you'll have to type a paper up, and, and you'll end up having to go to you know Google Scholar or PubMed or something something of that line of that nature, and uh, use literature, uh, fine literature, uh, to to cite references to cite, and um, some of those are good, some of those are bad, and uh, obviously a good uh, discussion on uh, looking at literature and picking apart the the statistical methods they use and so on and so forth is probably well beyond what I can talk about uh, today, uh, but um, I do want to go ahead and just, you know, every so often review literature and um, show you guys what's out there. So today what I'm going to be doing is uh, reviewing a uh, study. Uh, this comes from the Journal of Respiratory Care, July 2011. This is volume 56, uh, number 7. Uh, this is uh, called Performance of Current Invasive Care Unit Ventilators During Pressure and Volume Ventilation. Okay, so this is what they did. Uh, they took uh, six of the most um, prolific ventilators that we use here in the United States. Uh, they took the PB840, the Maquette Servo I, the uh, Newport E500, uh, the General Electric uh, G5, and the Dragier Vita XL. Um, and they went ahead and put those ventilators on a, a test lung. Uh, the lung that they used was the ASL uh, 5000. Uh, one of the new servo-controlled lungs that can control a lot of the variables, uh, muscle effort, uh, compliance, resistance, so on and so forth. Um, now, this is actually rather extensive. Uh, that's the interesting thing about respiratory care is um, they, they do the real thing as far as literature. There, there is not a lot, of, a lot of pictures, like some of the, uh, like GEMS, for example, Journal of Emergency Medicine, um, you know, they have a lot of pictures, they have a lot of um, uh, opinion, um, op-ad type types of things, um, and they do some literature reviews, but this is really, it can be a little dry if you're not used to looking through the literature, but still I think it's very important um, that we do uh, look look at l real literature and see what they're doing. So um, so the methods, well, what do they do? They used uh, six, six ventilators, um, Primarily, what I'm going to be talking about today is is uh, what they found when they used pressure assist control and volume assist control. So they used assist control and volume and pressure control ventilation. Uh, they had the lung, different combinations of compliance and resistance, low compliance, high, high uh, low compliance, low resistance, um, high compliance, uh, high resistance, um, and tried to simulate uh, different conditions. And um, what they're hoping to do is just to kind of uh, see how the these uh, six ventilators performed. Um, <clears throat> so the results are rather interesting, and that's actually why I chose this um, piece of literature review. Um, I should uh, say that this uh, comes from uh, comes from uh, Andrew D. Uh, Mar Marchese and um, um, and company. Uh, it was RRT PhD MD. Um, uh, still facilitated study, uh, so you know it did have uh, people in the respiratory field in addition to physicians and um, PhDs uh, doing the study. Uh, so, well, what did they find? Well, let me try to summarize this. the The Reader's Digest, de the Reader's Digest version of what they found. Um, they found that uh, most of the ventilators performed fairly well. There were certain situations where some of the ventilators did not perform well. Um, and particularly what they found was that the greatest um, variation in performance, one ventilator performing, um, you know, how one ventilator performed versus another ventilator, that the greatest ver ver variety of performance that they found was actually in volume assist control ventilation. Now, as many of us well know, assist control, volume control ventilation, is almost or somewhat of a flagship mode of ventilation. It's prolific. Lots of people use it. It's a very popular, very popular mode of ventilation. And yet, when we use, when we look at how well ventilators um, ventilate, 
for lack of better words, with this very popular mode of ventilation, there's a lot of variety, a lot of variability in how, you know, these are these are some of the top of the line ventilators, you know, the Maquette Servo Y, the uh, Draeger of EXL. Um, you know, these these are not these are not cheap um, knockoff type ventilators. You know, these these are uh, you know considered um, some of the, the top of the line ICU ventilators um, that we have available in the United States um, and uh, in assist control uh, volume assist control uh, the ventilators performed um, differently quite differently um, there were also differences in, in performance of pressure uh, assist control and so on and so forth, but uh, really volume assist control was, was where most of the differences were found. And, and I think this, this differs um, in this study versus some of the other studies that have done um, earlier on ventilators. Um, so uh, what the conclusion, what can we take, take away from this? Well, I think the conclusion is often, and, and I've even said this, often when we first learn, start learning about ventilators, we'll generally say, well, look, all ventilators generally work the same. And, and that is true. They, they blow air into your patient. Uh, that is the, the fundamental physiological principle of mechanical positive pressure ventilation. However, how the ventilator, how efficiently, how effectively the ventilator blows that air um, into certain patients can vary significantly from ventilator to ventilator. So don't think that just because I have somebody in uh, volume control, assist control ventilation, uh, title volume of 500, uh, yada, yada, yada. I put them into another ventilator, another type of ventilator, with the exact same settings that I am going to have the exact same physiology occur in that patient. That the patient will interact with that second ventilator exactly the same as the first, even though I have the exact same settings. And I think that's a take-home point, is that no two ventilators are going to be exactly the same in the way that they, they interact with the patient, um, even two top-of-the-line ventilators. Uh, now, some of the limitations of the study, obviously they used um, a lung simulator, so they didn't really use a real patient, uh, but the lung simulator is reasonably effective um, at simulating some of the major conditions, you know, conditions of compliance, resistance, and so on and so forth. Um, I should also note that um, a potential limitation of the study, I'll say potential, um, is that some of the companies, such as Draeger, did provide some of the money for, for funding this, this um, specific study. Now, um, I, I will say, reading through this, uh, I did not see a bias toward uh, certain ventilators. It did not seem like there was any sort of bias um, in, in the actual data, they just presented the data as they found, and they didn't come out and say, hey, look, this this Draeger Avita XL, hey, it's the best ventilator out there. Uh, nothing like that. It just said, look, um, um, the, the conclusions was, the, the conclusion, when we look at the abstract, uh, being that most of the ventilators performed ex at an acceptable level during majority of evaluations, but some ventilators performed inadequately during specific settings, uh, bedside clinical evaluation is needed, and I would agree with that. I would agree that we, uh, especially in transport, uh, if I have a transport ventilator, let's say I come into hospital, patients on a PBA 40, and they have certain settings, and I mirror those settings on my LTB 1200, I should not necessarily expect that patient to, to do exactly the same on my ventilator as they were doing on the hospital ventilator. They may get better, they may get worse, or certain physiological parameters may change. Blood pressure, pulse, heart rate, um, compliance, resistance, work of breathing, uh, how the patient interacts. All those things can change when I transition to another ventilator. So I think it's a really important uh, point to take home. Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, interestingly enough, um, they did find that um, in pressure control ventilation, performance was not affected by the, the PEEP they used. And they actually uh, used anywhere from 5 to 15 centimeters of water at PEEP. I think that's rather interesting that um, PEEP didn't seem to significantly affect performance in um, pressure control ventilation. Um, and again, I think the take-home point is in some of the flagship modes of ventilation, specifically volume assist control, uh, the ventilators perform very differently, and we need to be cognizant of that uh, when we're transitioning patients uh, to different